Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here with TRQ where you can view before you do. In this video, we're gonna be looking into the P0171 and P0174 codes, lean codes that may show up on your engine. We're gonna talk about the possible causes and how to fix them. Okay, I pulled up in the scan tool a P0171. Now you could also see a P0174 as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Those are codes representing if you have a V engine, so if you have a V6 or a V8. This V6 engine clearly illustrates the difference between bank one and bank two. You can see this bank or this side of the engine seems to be much farther forward than this side of the engine in this valve cover. That makes this side bank one and this cylinder number one and this side is bank two. So two different sides of the engine, two different codes. We only have an inline four cylinder in this. There's no P0174 with this vehicle, just a P0171, which is what we have. One more thing real quick about these codes. You may not notice any symptoms whatsoever if you see these codes. So it may just be the light that's on that you notice, but you really should address the problem and not ignore it. Before we get too deep into this, let's talk about what a lean condition is. An engine burns air and fuel, and the combination of which needs to be perfectly matched. If there's not enough fuel or too much air, the condition is considered lean. If there's too much fuel and not enough air, the condition is rich. So in this case, there's either not enough fuel or too much air causing the problem. Here are things that can cause the P0171 and P0174. One of those things could be a vacuum leak. In other words, there's air that's getting into the engine that's past the throttle body. If there's too much air in the engine, it will set that code. Additionally, if there's not enough fuel, so say you have a malfunctioning fuel injector that's not providing enough fuel to the engine, that could also set that code. Lastly, and this one's an interesting one, if you have any exhaust leaks before the O2 sensor, that can let in air that could set that code. The O2 sensor would perceive that as the engine has too much air. So if there's an exhaust leak, if there's a vacuum leak, or the engine isn't getting enough fuel, any one of those things could cause that code to activate. Here's a better illustration of what I'm talking about as far as exhaust leaks causing issues before the O2 sensor. As you can see on this truck, there's a whole exhaust manifold and the gasket and its connection up here. So if the manifold is cracked, or if the gasket is compromised, any exhaust leaks up in this area before this O2 sensor, that could set that code. So be sure to address any of those exhaust leaks if you have these codes. Here's an example of the exhaust noise you might hear, and this one is because of this broken bolt on the manifold. If you have an exhaust leak, it's usually fairly obvious in that you can actually hear it. Address that exhaust leak, clear the code, and then see if the problem is still there. But as far as vacuum leaks are concerned, well, I used to use carburetor cleaner where I would spray around the intake manifold and the fuel injectors, all the things in the intake circuit to see if I can find any leaks. The thing about carburetor cleaner and brake cleaner doing this is those things are both flammable, and if there's hot engine parts nearby, it could catch fire. So I'm gonna to suggest to use water instead. This water will go in and fill in that vacuum leak and hopefully smooth things out. That's basically what you're looking for. When you're spraying around, the idle should change when you find the leak. So if the idle changes while you're spraying around, look in that area for the problem. Let's do that right now on this engine. While you're conducting this test, spray around the intake manifold, fuel injectors, any place where air is going into the engine and look and listen for a change. And I just heard something by this fuel injector here. Whenever I spray it, I can, hear, I can hear the water being sucked in. So that seems to be the problem area. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a change in sound or change in the way the engine is running. Now that the problem seems to be with number one fuel injector, let's get it out of there and take a closer look. All right, I believe I found the problem here, and that is, you can probably see that O-ring on that fuel injector was, is damaged, so that's not gonna seal very well, and that will cause a vacuum leak. This is the type of thing you're looking for. 
Now there's one more thing we can do as long as we've got the fuel injectors out. We can check their resistance just because I'm curious as to what it is. I'm not saying that's necessarily gonna lead you to a problem. However, if you are doing this check and you see the resistance of one of the injectors is way off from the rest of them, that could be suspect. Most likely you're looking for a vacuum leak like what we've already found. But we'll check the resistance just for good measure. And we have the DVOM set up on resistance check and I just put it so that it beeps. So it's auto ranging, so you don't have to worry about necessarily the range. Makes it easier. All right, injector one, 94. Injector two, 94. Injector three, 94. And 92 on the last one. So that's not enough of a difference for me to have any concern. What you're looking for is, like I said, a big difference between them. But it could also be that the injector is clogged internally, which it could have great resistance on the outside, so it could look good here. But if it's got some debris or something on the inside of the injector, that could cause the code. It's a bit more difficult to find a clogged injector. I'm just checking the resistance because I have the injectors out and well, I can show you how to check the resistance on the injectors and possibly find the problem that way. This O-ring was likely damaged during assembly. So when somebody put the fuel rail in, uh, this O-ring probably caught on the side of the intake and rolled over and got damaged. To prevent this, I use silicone paste. I just put it around the outside of the O-ring before installation. That way, I know it looks kind of goopy here, but this way, when it goes together, that lubrication should help that fall into place so that it doesn't get damaged. So when you're installing these new O-rings, make sure you push the fuel rail and the fuel injectors all the way down before you put the fasteners on. If you try to run it down with the fasteners, that's the kind of thing that could cause the damage we saw to begin with. So try to avoid that. If you do find a bad injector during this testing, don't replace just the bad injector. I recommend replacing all four injectors. Similarly, uh, since one of these O-rings was an issue, I'm gonna replace all four of these O-rings, not just the one. Now that we've done the repair, I'm gonna clear the code and see if it's gone away. No more check engine light. The P0171 and P0174 codes are an indication that your computer is detecting a lean condition with your engine, which could be caused by a vacuum leak, a clogged injector, but don't forget, it could also be caused by an exhaust leak before the O2 sensor. So if you have any exhaust leaks, be sure to address those exhaust leaks before you address this code because that could be setting that code. There will be additional information down in the description. I'm Eric the Car Guy here with TRQ where you can view before you do. And I'll see you next time. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.